Welcome to the Youth Leader's Brain. Oh boy, this is gonna be a fun, fun topic. We are top 10 advice for new youth leaders. So so let's let's rewind the way back, way back. Yeah. How old were you when you started? Like like you were when they said, okay, you're the new youth leader, how old were you? Right out of college, so 22. 22, yeah. so okay. Older. Yeah, how old I got were you? married at 21, it worked in yeah junior high ministry and then official youth pastor at 23. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I was, uh, I got married at 20 and then moved out at 21. And I was gonna just kind of hang back at my church, you know, like I just want to get the lay of the land. And my grandpa was doing the youth work and he's like, <laughs> you know, 65, 70. And he's like, Sam, <laughs> you need to be the new youth leader. <laughs> And just like that. <laughs> and that's voted my, on it. Right. <laughs> so that's my sum total of, uh, so, so tell me about that first, I don't know, month or something like that. Uh, I, I know I'm going way back way in, in back. history, but yeah. uh, what was, what's kind of going through your head? What's, uh, what's it, what's it like? Well, I was already interning at the church I was at, so I was coming on down on weekends and done some uh, activities, really, not really any consistent thing, but activities. There was... A guy in the church that was filling in, and that was a little conflict there that I didn't expect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And but I knew the pastor because he was my pastor growing up, so I was going to a new church for him. He'd only been there a year, but I knew him and knew what he kind of expected. But I was just excited about playing paintball and getting paid to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Honestly, I was I had gone to college and had these tools and I had all my, you know, notebooks for right, those right. classes and I got this. I can charge the world. I'm ready. And then I realized that I did have, they gave me responsibility of youth pretty quick, but I only did that a couple of days a week. The rest was mowing and trimming and lawns yeah. and toilets. And okay. So it was kind of just a a move into more of what you'd done before or yeah, done. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And the real expectation of what, oh, I thought it was just going to be all these teens. And it was, but there was a lot more to it than I really had yeah, realized. Yeah. Yeah. So this is Donnie Wilson. Been, uh, you've done youth work uh, or, or as a youth leader for, you said, 16, six, 16 years. My name is Sam Brock. I uh, was a youth leader in a couple different uh, youth groups for a total of 12 years. And then tell us about your first month. Or yeah, year. I was under Jason Jett, who was a 10-year staff guy at another church in Oklahoma. And he had just taken over the youth group and I was working alongside with him. So watching him go through the transition and then uh, a year into that, I helped with and started teaching junior high boys. And so that was, we were there within the transitional youth ministry. So I got to see it happen for two years before coming out to California, just full of, you know, I just graduated <laughs> grad school and I'm ready to just yeah. take on the yeah, world kind of thing. Go at it. So I was excited for it. Now, this is unique because I've got some guys here who, and you've been in youth work now, how long? It was uh, almost 10 years. Almost 10 years, yeah. yeah. At this church. Yeah. So, so what, what happens is we, we went through it, obviously, at the beginning, but these guys have been doing it long enough that they've actually talked with new guys probably every year. Probably every year we've had this kind of conversation. In fact, when we were looking at this topic, top 10 advice for a new youth leader, this was not a hard topic to like just... Okay, there's this and this and that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like both of the guys are sitting here like, I have too many yeah. things, yeah. you know. We like, like, yeah. <laughs> Can we do part A, part B? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So so this is by no means um, extensive, uh, but, um, but it is, uh, whether it's uh, some of these guys have trained their replacements or they've been doing it long enough that new guys are like, you know, they, and they've been asked for advice. So wow. I'm really curious to see uh, what the list is. Mine is a combination of, of philosophy, but some real practical, practical. yeah, real basic stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm going to guess I'm going to be surprised um, a few times by, I'm like, ooh, that would be a good thing. To I would say if mm -hmm. I was going to qualify this, this is what I did wrong and learn from it. <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. A lot of it. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. this is where I thought I was. And what to tell the next in, guy. Eight yeah. years in, I was like, ooh, no, that's not Don't what do it. that. Yeah. <laughs> and then now as a dad, I'm going, oh, no, 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 no. All right. Yeah. No. Yeah. So is this less hard for you or is it? It came quickly, came quick. but it was just a barrage of ideas <laughs> and then trying to sort them all together into right. these 10 sort of categories. Right. Why, yeah. why can't we just share 37 things? Yeah. Like, top 10? you got to be kidding. Right. So, so I cheated and yeah. combined a couple of mine into <laughs> one category. <laughs> yeah. A bunch of lumping going on. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, 
Well, let's yeah. get right in it, into it. We're going to start here at uh, number 10, work our way all the way up to number one. Obviously, with a list like this, uh, the priority may be a little bit different depending on the situation you're in or, or whatnot. But uh, uh, my first uh, number, number 10, uh, just a reminder to this person uh, that the youth are listening way more than you think. Ooh, and, that's a good one. And it is... Uh, when you've been doing it for a while, you just think you're like talking and nobody's really listening. You're not seeing as much change as you want. To a new guy, he kind of jumps in, I'm going to change the world. Uh, and then he talks to junior hires and, you know, it's kind of... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just have to remind folks, no, they're listening to you. They're listening to a lot of what you're saying. I was going to yeah. say the other way, they are listening. They're going to repeat it back to you and use it against you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. So yeah. if you Both say ways. something uh, not so uh, good, <laughs> yeah. uh, there you go. It's going to get back to the parent. Yeah, yeah. 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 So they're listening That's more good. than you think. Yeah. So, uh, Ryan, we're going to start with you, okay. uh, number 10. Mine, I was working on these and putting them together. It turned out that a bunch of them lined up. I'm preaching First Timothy 3 on Sunday <laughs> and the qualifications of a bishop, pastor, elder, you know, and... So, so a bunch of them lined up with that, and I kind of, uh, there won't be too many surprises here. <laughs> be blameless be is blameless. the first one for a new youth leader. Just because of the problems you see um, in, in the area, especially of sexual misconduct within young guys and these, you know, beautiful teenage girls, and they're all surrounded. It's like there's a Christian college director that said, he, uh, if there's a girl stranded on the side of the road, I can't pick you up. I'm not, I'm not going to. And it's not necessarily a Bible command, but... Just being really careful, um, you know, there's a, a pastor that said, all the pictures I take, I'm having my hands in front of me, crossed in front of me so that if there's a photo, my hands aren't hidden, you know, mm -hmm. little things like that. Just being really, really careful. We did a no touch policy in our youth ministry just for my protection. All the counseling went to my wife for the young ladies. And it was just something that we wanted to be super, super careful to not not take advantage, not not even get close to that line. Yeah, I'll jump onto this one a little mm -hmm. bit. I think it's really important that uh, that a that a guy treat every girl in his youth group exactly the same. Uh, so so that you don't uh, they're really paying attention to kind of the attention that you give. So you're not going to give any one more attention than yeah. another one. You're not going to compliment any any different. You know, you're going to say hi the same way. You're going to say bye the same way. Yeah. You're going to treat yeah. everybody and exactly. Then our the our same. director in college said, "You just have to play the dweeb." So some of us don't have to play very hard. <laughs> yeah, there. but it's like you think you know, as a balding dad figure in their life, there would be no trouble with that. But we've seen that that's not always the case. So you know, being extra extra careful. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm glad you brought that one on because that was one of them on my list that I didn't put in, but I was hoping one of you guys would cover. And and that you got to remember, there's a camera running. There's a video yeah. running everywhere yeah. you go, whatever you do. Yeah, and it's, it's kind of and blameless in the in the Bible sense covers a lot more than just that. You know, yeah. be ethical with your copying your Sunday school materials and mm -hmm. in, in everything. You know, <laughs> but this is maybe the biggest focus. Yeah, good, good. That's good. Number ten. What do you got for number ten? I have own your mistakes, be humble and gracious. So at first you're you do want to charge the world, you know, head mm -hmm. on. You got it figured out, but. Some of those parents have raised a couple kids and they now they have their last in the pastors and the guys before you and you think you know what you're doing and you have some good ideas but own the mistake when you make it because you will and then always be humble and gracious That's you're going to gain way more yeah as a new guy when you're like oh yeah i'm sorry write that note i'm sorry get it done. And I think one of the ways that you own that mistake is that you communicate it to your boss or to your parents, like before they find out about it another Always. way, you know, yeah. like you, you yeah. just, if you know, there's something that's going to wrap back around and, and, and the pastor's going to wonder what you were thinking, go, yeah. go tell him that you weren't thinking and that you messed something up and that's that good. he, uh, that this is, and this then is my mistake. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't do the same Learn thing. From it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like experience. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. He's adding on to your and learn from it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Little PS. Yeah. But how many mistakes did we make? I right. Mean, yeah. Yeah. And the sooner you own it and say, I messed up, you know, as long as it doesn't disqualify you or whatever, yeah. move forward. And, and 
Yeah, and even if it does disqualify you, it's not something you're trying to hide. If that, if you've done something that would disqualify you, you, you need to be disqualified. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it's a, it's it's a hard. It's it's that accountability that keeps it, that says no. I, I need to not. I need to think before I do mm-hmm. some of those things. Mm-hmm. So good. Oh, I like it. See, we've already started out uh, all all over the place. Yeah, no. Uh, my number nine is a reminder uh, mm. to everybody that youth change often. Uh, sometimes we have a tendency to kind of pigeonhole. Uh, okay, I've got my group. Uh, there's the bad ones. There's the good ones. There's you know, or or there's the loud one, or there's the clown, or or whatever. But young people from that seventh grade, sixth grade until early college, they just change a lot, and and you've got to be willing to kind of risk the the hey you're wanting to do right let, let me help you uh do right and then seeing them make some pretty big mistakes uh in their life and trying to help them uh through it it doesn't mean that i mean some people have a trajectory and it just keeps on going that same way but i've seen in in the youth group people just turn completely around mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. i want to be a youth leader that's there when they're making that turn. Yeah, by yeah. faith, I believe they can all do that. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. so I'm going to keep on <laughs> driving. It's amazing them. how some of them. Yeah, yeah you're right. That's, <laughs> I can't say anything. My next one is be a, a great uh, family man. So this is my mm-hmm. my cheating and lumping and everything. You know, <laughs> husband, one life, children in subjection from First Timothy three, and. Your marriage just overlaps into your youth ministry because every little nitpicking thing, my. My wife is incredible as mm-hmm. an asset, as a person, as just the way that she responds to me even is a testament to the youth ministry. If, you know, if the biblical command is to have them in subjection, how, how do you expect to run a church if you're a pastor? The, it overflows into disrespect that young people get for a youth pastor that can't control it his kids or who's always, you know, having these edgy, testy moments with Mm -hmm. his wife in front of people. And it just kind of gets awkward with them. And, you know, so get those things under control as a husband, as a spouse before you, before you bring them out in front of everybody else. But go ahead. No, go ahead. Don't, don't forget to bring them out. I think that's a huge, I, I see at least in my experience in the last four or five years as the pastor now, that some youth pastors are excited, but their wives aren't excited about youth ministry. And it won't flow as well or be as good or as safe or humble and gracious or blameless without your wife mm-hmm. and getting that involvement. I remember when, when we had just little kids and Cindy would bring the kids to you know the youth night and she'd be like, well, I can't be with yeah. the kids as much. I said, yeah, but you're showing, yeah. you're showing the kids yeah. how moms act and how, yeah. how they work. And so, man, I totally agree with this, that that young person knows what mom and dad are like at home and mm-hmm. they see that example. Mm-hmm. But their next m- biggest example of how a husband, wife, and parent would act is their youth leader. I mean, that's, yeah, our that's baby became our youth, our youth group mascot. mascot. Yeah. He was. Yeah. Yeah. He was our... Did she get dressed up? Or <laughs> Not really. No. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. Oh, that's a good. That's a good one. You're number nine. Uh, I'm gonna go back to stick and stay. Um, just stay. The longer you're there, so you're. I know you're their first year. You're just starting, but plan to stay. Do the, whatever God wants for you. If he wants you to move, move. But have the mindset, I'm staying. And if you stay, the fruit will be different and better. And you'll have more impact. Yeah. More impact. So uh, let's let's camp out on this for just a moment. Yeah. Because... Um, um, the, it's, it's like, you've got to live like you're going to stay there forever, knowing that God can move you. So you hang on lightly to whatever you're doing, knowing God can, uh, do it. But how does a guy figure out if, if, if he should leave? I mean, is there a, I mean, give me your 30 second thought on, on how, cause boy, the ministry to stay is, is huge. But when do they make that? I mean, you guys all made that jump. You didn't, you're not mm-hmm. staying in it mm-hmm. forever. So, mm-hmm. but yeah, for me, it was like you said, I kept my debt down and free from the world as much as you possibly can. You own local, you get invested, but it's, it's yours, Lord. It is open. Now, how do you know when to leave or transition like I did? I don't know. In the sense of, 
I just kept doing what I knew to do. Yeah. And it seemed like, you know, I got up, I read the Bible, I went soloing, I did, I did, I did the things that you know to do, and it was it just happened for me. I know it doesn't work that way for everybody. There's some very clean breaks and people move forward and move on. But for me, I, I would just challenge you just to do what you know to do biblically every day. And you'll have the sense and there'll be, there'll be this movement. And then I didn't want to be senior pastor, just to be quite honest. I loved youth ministry. I was getting older where it was harder to do the all-nighters <laughs> and all those kinds of things. But, but I thought I could get some young guys in there and it just... I just stayed to do what I knew to do, and yeah. then it moved forward. That's what yeah. we're trying to bring our singles class to, just in life, you know. That's yeah. just the general life principle. For us, it worked out to align with God's call for our life and has brought me now into this next journey, and it's like, okay. Yeah, I'll I didn't go looking for it. I, yeah. Some guys just go looking for it too much, I think. I think what you'll see from these two guys, their their life story would say that really they're they're not in the same job that they're in, but both both of you are in kind of a different season. You mm -hmm. you are now in the same spot, but doing a little bit different ministry where you fit, and it makes sense. I think where some people leave is when it starts to get hard or there are problems, and that's what you have to stick. You you got to get through yeah. that. Don't that's leave. what I don't leave. I yeah. go in expecting it, and then I have a great model of my dad planning the church 34 years ago so it's like i have that well he didn't leave and there were a lot of problems he went through too so i guess yeah. i can get through this yeah. Yeah. i would say that's the worst time to leave when there are problems right yeah. right so when i talk to a guy and especially a young guy he's like i just i feel like god's calling me to a different spot and i said well why are you leaving i mean there's got to be a you know, and yeah. if you are trying to run away from something, then I'm really not, mm -hmm. this This might not make sense. If you are trying to run to something, you, you know, there's a, there's something. So both of these guys, yeah, I love the youth ministry, but this, this is, you know, I'm being pulled to this, itself. right? Yeah, yeah I, I can see, I can see that. I believe that you will have more open relationships uh, in, in a term of people will talk to you more when they know you're in it for the long haul. And now I have counseling family counseling because I've stayed mm -hmm. and they just know I've been there long enough. They're like, Oh, this guy's been through yep. it. And yep. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing, yeah. but they come looking for me yeah, more yeah. than me looking for them. <clears throat> yeah. There are advantages to that, that it, many times the guys who are even been there a long time, we don't even recognize it. We don't even recognize the fact that because people know we're going to stay there or they believe we are, that, that it's, it's cool. Okay. Number eight, just be yourself. Uh, that made my short list. <laughs> it did it. Yeah, this is, um, the problem is when you're first starting in youth work is that you you probably had a youth leader, one or two of them along the way that you're like, oh, that that was really had an impact on my life. And you've seen some other guys who have some talents and abilities and you see what they're uh, doing. And then you're comparing notes on we're doing this, we're doing this. Yeah. And before yeah. you know it, you're living outside of who you are. You're trying to be, I'm trying to be Donnie and Ryan right. and God did not make me that way. Right. Right. I've just got to use the talents and abilities God gave me. Be comfortable and content with yeah. my spot. Yeah, I, I see the tendency to try and be trendy. You know, you get involved in these youth networks and you're even reading outside of maybe your normal group of people and that's got good. And then you start following these trends that aren't you mm -hmm. and, and don't just, just be yourself. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Yeah, we just sang Jesus is all the world to me last Sunday and there's a line in there, following him, I know I'm right. You know, <laughs> when Peter was at the end of, when Jesus was about to leave, and he's telling him, feed my lamps. He looks over at John, well, what about him? And Jesus just says, look, forget him. What if he lives to be a million years old? Follow me. And yep, it's like, yep. we just have to follow Christ the way yep. the way we know how. Yeah, it's good. Well, my next one is be sober, to use the Bible word, to be serious about the right kinds of things, to be serious about the, the things that really matter. Um, I remember as a teen becoming just so sincere in my walk with God, Again, that that it was like anything could happen in my life and I was at peace with it. And I wanted to be uh, led by a man who could who could just fuel that fire in me that was growing and building. And so just the sincere, true walk with God that has to overflow into the people you're ministering to. Someone who's going to push you, you know, be the youth pastor that can push the young people toward a real relationship with Christ that you have. 
And and you might not be cool to every kid in, yeah. in doing that. But the or audience any kid. or any yeah. kid, yeah. 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 But yeah. the audience that is <laughs> yeah. inspired by that mm -hmm. and who can kind of grab hold of that are the people that you know will make a difference for eternity. Mm -hmm. They're the ones you're wanting to invest mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. That's good. We have get around seasoned youth guys, uh, <laughs> be their friend and learn from them. I, I was able to do that early on, some mm -hmm. with you guys and others that got connected, but you're going to learn a lot from those uh, seasoned guys that have been, I'd say at least at least five or more years down the road. And I tend a little above that if you can find them, but um, get around them, be their friends, go to their houses, uh, hang out with their wives and kids and, and do everything you can to be that. They're going to pour into you more and say, I made that mistake. Don't do that. And, and you're going to have a camaraderie when you have a burden in life and ministry that maybe you couldn't share with in your church or even your pastor that, that could be a real help and, and help you to not quit. Yeah, this is really important. If you want this relationship with a guy, because there will come a time early on. Uh, for me, it was probably year two and year three where I really struggled with the fact, is this, is this worth it? Like I, I, you, did, you put so much into the kids and you didn't always see a return on investment. And, you know, I was asking a youth leader, why, well, they just don't even listen to me. Like, why am I doing this? And and we did a fishing trip together and, and uh, talked about, you know, it was somebody who'd been through it and really helped me continue on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they want to also. Yeah. The yeah. Guys They're craving yeah. it. Yeah. They're craving it. Too. Yeah. yeah. Even from a young guy. Yeah. 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 But when you've been in it a while, you know, you need the things you're not good at. Many times a young person brings yeah. to you. Yeah. 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 So you, you want I to I remember get when I transitioned into the pastorate, I felt like I lost a lot of these guys. Mm -hmm. And it was like, now I have to sit at the big kid's table. You know, <laughs> I didn't know how to sit at the big kid's table. Right. And I didn't like it. And like to sit with you guys today is like a fresher breath there and a new sense. So those can become lifetime guys. Yeah. We're not trying to offend any pastors or anybody who <laughs> might be Donnie's friend. So. I don't have any friends. So. You don't anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? Oh, yeah. I put my foot in my mouth every time, don't I? Every time. Uh, that's great fun. Uh, and this one is appropriate. Number seven, own your age. That's good. That's good. Own your age. Now, here, here's what I mean by that. Like, like you're young. Yes, you, uh, like like you don't have experience. Like like, own that. Uh, this is a little bit like your I'm own gracious. own your mistakes. Yeah. Um, but I I think some guy youth guys forget. I don't have teens in my home. Like I've not had experience with teenagers to the degree uh, that some of these uh, folks have. And I I think there's another aspect of of own your age is to recognize that my age has nothing to do with scriptural authority. Yeah. So if I'm sharing the word of God, yeah. I ha it's not based on my age mm -hmm. being deciding that, oh, I, I know the Bible better. The Bible is very clear about what we should yeah. do and not do. And, and so sometimes I will, somebody will, you, well, you're just a young youth pastor. Yeah, but I, I'm sharing a verse from God's word. Yeah. This is not, I, I need to recognize my my res my responsibility to respect and honor and, and those that are older, you know, I've just got to be comfortable with that. I have a distinct memory of learning that lesson. I was interning at a church in Kansas before I even got out of college, and I was apologizing for preaching the Word of God and <laughs> talking about something that I really didn't have any real life experience about. I got done. It was a small church. They left, and the senior pastor came up to me and says, don't ever do that again. If it's the Word of God and you're you're preaching it correctly. Be humble, be gracious, yeah. but it's the word of God. Let it speak mm -hmm. for itself. Yeah, that's and I, it stuck in my head before I was even in youth ministry. I was like, oh. Yeah. 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 yeah that's really relieving. I would, it is. I would kind of open up myself like in owning my age when I was uh, in our last video, I talked about the idea of that dad breakfast. Mm -hmm. And I would normally come into that dad breakfast with, I know I'm young and I know this is kind of, you know, I, I'm not the expert. Uh, here, uh, you can help me. And, mm -hmm. and by just owning that, like mm -hmm. like being, yep, I'm 24. Yeah. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah. I can that's, barely that's grow facial right. hair. <laughs> right. All right. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, mine would be to be hospitable and generous and uh, given to hospitality Great. is the probably the most fruitful um, tool, I guess, we've used over the past 
two years. We've been in singles ministry now for a year, but my last couple of years of youth ministry was just, just unlocking our money to be used for the good of everybody. And a starting youth pastor salary, <laughs> there's not much wiggle room for generosity in there, yes. but we had gotten a raise and had already been used to living on so much. And it was almost like the raise just turned into generosity. And, and what that did is just unlocked our stuff from us and turned it into this blessing. We could use our house for other people. Yeah. And the hospitality, the times around our dinner table is just, it's powerful, man. It, it is. is. It's a wonderful tool that God had a lot of wisdom in, in putting it in the scripture. I remember being real tight like that. We were able to get some new carpet in our tiny little home. The next week we had teenagers over and Daniel Land, I'm calling you out. <laughs> dumped a whole plate of pizza and and, uh, and there were your last friend ranch. your last friend <laughs> you just called him out <laughs> we had this stain in the middle of our oh, carpet man. brand new carpet ranch dressing stain and my wife's like we're investing in teenagers yeah. that's that's our proof of investment yeah, yeah that's really good. cool and but, some of the biggest lessons I've learned was from generous people in our church or yeah. people who've been generous to me and I just noticed them and remembered them and yeah. really appreciate it. And like, you listen different from them. Sometimes people, I think, they, they think that hospitality can be free. Like, like you could do hospitality with, with nothing. But the reality is yeah. uh, it, it costs. Yeah. Like, like hospitality costs my time. And like what you're saying here, oh, our carpet and wear and tear that. on your yeah. house. Yeah. And oh, man, that uh, I've got to pay gas. And I just... it. I mean, so you're really writing pay the cost uh, to be with people, mm -hmm. uh, to be around them. Um, and I, I think it's just one of those things you, that nobody's going to really invest in another guy unless they're showing that hospitality on their own. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You you receive more ability to do hospitality as you see a person being hospitable. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? If I don't, they're just going to use all that on themselves, uh, all that money uh, or time or, time. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, That's... But That's an underutilized, one. just powerful tool. Yeah. So powerful. And the yeah. ministry is so rich in those moments of hospitality. You know what I mean? Yeah. Those times that you're just in the living room yeah. Or, yeah. or not doing something structured or, or right. something like that. Or, yeah. I'm getting ahead of myself. But even investing in something, you're building sets in your backyard for an upcoming event or whatever. Mm -hmm. the, they're just there and they're painting and they're whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, and giving your wife the ability to do hospitality. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some kitchen tools and things and stuff. You're stealing one of mine. Slow down. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, Sorry about that. Yeah. Moving right along. Uh, here we go to my number six. Oh, no, no, that's your number seven. I'm out of order. Your number seven. Just stay biblical. Uh, time and talent and you get excited about things and just stay biblical. Do it the Bible way and search that out. What does that mean? How does that affect? How does that apply? We can go ex get so excited about the newest tools and the newest games and the newest stuff at Ironwood that <laughs> ah, there goes my friend again. We, <laughs> we can. We He's out of here. <laughs> <laughs> we we just do it biblically. Every time that I have. What I would say, given grace in an area that the Bible wouldn't, it comes back and bites me. Or every time I, I think I can improve on that and do it this way and it'll go better. And it does for a little bit. And then every time. Now, if I continued down that road, I, I'm, I don't know where that would go. But come back to what does the Bible say? What does the Bible want? Hmm. Let's preach it. Let's teach it. Let's live it. And stay biblical. I don't know if you guys have ever had like the old timers who will say, you know what, the youth haven't changed at all. You, you know, and mm -hmm. basically what they're saying is people are still people. people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The the ministry that we do, certainly some things will change, but but they're sinners. Yeah, it's they, pretty simple. Yeah, yeah, they need the gospel. Yeah. Um, it's uh you just stay right there and it's not always so brand new. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. that's good. I like it. Okay, 
Uh, number six, real practical one for me is uh, put together a plan B box. Um, yeah. yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah, so, you taught me that one. A long time ago, yeah. yeah. So for me, this is just like a toolbox or a box that has a number of things in it uh, that you can play uh, quickly or devotionals that you could use. Side or, of the road. Yeah, yeah uh, <laughs> just a wide variety. Mine always sat in the trunk of my car. Yep. Um, and um, and every now and then, everything I was planning fell apart and, you know, it would all uh, be there. And this was Plan B Box. Uh, the Plan B Box went with me on any activity uh, as well, because every now and then there's a That's half good. hour I'm trying to fill or, or something like that. Yeah. So, uh, again, this could be an entire uh, session, uh, <laughs> but there's uh, 20, 30 things that are probably in that Plan B Box. And so just look through your stuff, the things that you use the most often, uh, keep those available to you. Mm -hmm. And uh, and a little list of the Plan B options. That's, yeah, that's, that's what a, I'd say. I'd have some non-physical things maybe as backups, yep. but not an actual box, but I probably should have. Yeah. <laughs> I had a bag. I yeah. Had, you, yeah. Like a bag. Yeah. I remember we were on a trip to Oklahoma and we were driving back and the day got long driving. And remember we... I had pulled my plan B balloons. box out and all those yeah. balloons and they end up making this huge bridge of chain across the whole bus. Yeah. And it just killed time when people were starting to get cranky right. and right. loony yeah. and yeah. I just pulled something out of my plan B box. Some some guys will call this their back pocket games mm -hmm. or their back pocket devotionals yeah. or, or, or something like that. But um, it has to be... Uh, I find that I have to have that little reminder. It's actually a sheet of paper that would say mm -hmm. you could play these games or you could do these yeah, things. I had that in my box. Mm -hmm. like, yep, just kind of sits there and, yeah. and uh, oh no, this is. And I probably use my Plan B box the most when I'm reliant upon technology. <laughs> well, <laughs> and then the technology. <laughs> oh, uh, and so now that doesn't I, happen to Ryan. Right, right. Well, Ryan's a technological tech genius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so, you, know. So. <laughs> you and me are a little more analog. <laughs> right, right. Analog. He's got the iPad over here with all of his stuff. <laughs> Great. What My next one would be. I mean, I would probably usually start with this one. Be a preacher slash teacher. Uh, in in Paul's apt to teach statement, his his effort was to contradict the false teaching of, of his day. And so there's a lot of false teaching within youth ministry of entertainment. And so we have to be able to teach the scriptures in a way that they understand it. So my main focus on having it was to have a Bible-focused youth ministry. And that was going to primarily come through the most time we spent together was around the Word of God in a preaching teaching setting. So we had a meeting twice a week. But it was always going to be preaching through the scripture and helping them see the scripture. But with a lot of depth, but not just depth for depth's sake. Like mm -hmm. not just, you know, oh, the glory of God <laughs> is so magnanimous. You know, yeah. I, I just get a little aggravated at people that talk such high lofty language. It seems like they're not living it. It seems fake or Untouchable. if anything. Yeah, it's not connecting with the young people. So I want depth of scripture connected to their lives, depth of scripture connected to TikTok, depth of scripture connected to Instagram and knowing what a snap streak is and knowing why that's important to them and helping them uh, equate idolatry to their tools that they have in their, their hands. Mm -hmm. So, so being a, a preacher of the word of God, but making it making it applicable. So every time I preach, I'd want to make them laugh, which would usually mean they were engaged. I would want them to learn something. So I was teaching something. And then I'd, I'd want them to have some action step that they could take with application. Basically, every time I preached, I wanted there to be engagement write and that learning. Down. That was good. Yeah, Because <laughs> I need to copy it. That was good. So yeah, be a preacher slash teacher. And, and when we used to have a statement basically on your state biblical here is that God's word works. And if God's word works, then I need to make sure that has a, it's not a tack on. It's not the last thing that I prepare. This is the, this is the main part of what I do is sharing God's word to help you live your life. Yeah. And, and a lot of these things that we spend a lot of time and a lot of our budget and a lot of effort at, um, they are just a means to the end of getting right. here to the word of God and, and sharing that. Yeah, that was so, where most of my time went every week was yeah. a full on sermon. Ready. Yeah. Okay. Good. This is a little bit of a repeat. Uh, use your home, involve your wife and family, which hey, really you, you already yeah. hit. Yeah. 
my wife is excellent at this. And uh, even when we just had a tiny little home in the ghetto and just use it and hold on to it lightly. We've really covered this, but it comes with his generosity. Mm -hmm. Be generous, be hospitable. Don't forget your wife. Your wife's gonna connect with some people that you won't. She needs to be a part of that. She'll protect you from certain things. And then uh, your family, when your kids get, when you have kids or if you have kids, they they can hinder sometimes and slow you down, but they're a bigger asset mm -hmm. and the way they help and get involved and the, people to, model. To use model. your home, I, I think is, uh, it doesn't it doesn't get used the same way every year. It's kind of like, like, Whatever year, whatever's going on at, at your home, whether babies or kids or mm -hmm. things that are happening at home, it's kind of like you've got to really work with your wife to figure out what works for us right now. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. it changes. Yeah. It changes yeah. from year to year. Yeah, I was saying before, I have teenagers in the youth group and little connection with the teenagers that are in the youth group now. That's changing for me and it's new. It's mm -hmm. different. Mm -hmm. And that's going to... Yeah, we, we haven't figured it out yet. We <laughs> didn't cut back after one kid. We just... Basically brought Added. the baby along to everything. Right. Yeah. We cut back a little bit after our second, second. kid. Yeah. Yeah. And then after the third kid, it was like, I want so badly to keep on doing all of this, but I just can't. Right. You yeah. know? right. Yeah. So we tell them back a little bit. But now that they're my youngest is four, they just kind of pick up and go on almost yeah. anywhere. Oh, yeah, we babysitters go. In, yeah. in the youth group. <laughs> yeah. And they it, need that. And and so it really is kind of a statement of intentional use. You, you know what I mean? That's where good. where, yeah. where we're gonna we're gonna figure out how to use this tool. Um, and then we, we just flex according to whatever And it won't happen do. if you don't if you don't intentionally. Yeah, if you don't intentionally you'll be too do tired it. Right. and your kids are uh, <laughs> driving me nuts. Yeah. You have to. Yep. Yeah. Gotta set it up. Okay, here we go. We're on number five. Number five. Uh, for me on this one, I, I have a book uh, here. Uh, number five is the is the book Side by Side, which has the concept um, needed and needy. And so uh, let me just uh, let me just mention what's uh, what's going on uh, right here. Is that in the in this book? Simple book, not a not a deep book at all, but it's really about how a how a congregation kind of works uh, together. And the fact that everybody comes to your group, both needy and needed in, in the, in the body good. of Christ. And so what mm -hmm. you're doing with your teens is helping them recognize that they are both needed and needy. There are some areas in this church where they are needed to jump in and help and be the servant and, and be the help. But they also have some things where they have great needs and church is what uh, is what provides this. Obviously, this would be a really good book for uh, for adults. It has something as simple as how to say hi to a neighbor uh, or or a visitor. You know, mm -hmm. something somebody like that. Um, but uh, this was one. This this concept. I, I don't. This is a fairly new book. I think I just read this book uh, a short while ago. Um, but uh, this was a Sunday school lesson when I first started on just teaching my kids what kind of group we would be. Like, mm -hmm. like this is the way we're going to act. I'm going to expect some of you uh, to jump in and serve others. And I'm going to also expect that some of you need help. And we're all needed and needy both, uh, both ways. So this concept is just for a new youth leader uh, to help him understand how the, how the group works together. And I would say, remember where you fit in as a new youth pastor. Mm -hmm. To your pastor, don't be too needy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But be needed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I've had some experience with some of those guys. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. So that's my number five. We my get. number five comes from uh, the word be patient, which in, in First Timothy 3, it's not necessarily talking about. But I, I'm lining it up more with your stick and stay concept, but just being patient with the long term. The long term goals of what we're trying to do in youth ministry and I came into every preaching teaching time like I'm going to this is going to be the one that changes their life, you know, and I believe that by faith. Every time I preach, God could use his word to change him. I never knew if it did. But now I'm, you know, 10 years on the other side of believing that every week. And the the kinds of life changes I've seen in some of the teens that have come through. That's when it's like, OK, the patience um, has paid off in some respects. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. there's. A couple brothers that went up to Northern California, they're working in a Christian school and a couple sisters that one married a church staff and one married a 
missionary and all these marriages that are happening yep, now, yep. all these weddings. My, the first wedding I performed was from a <laughs> yeah. couple that, that started liking each other in the youth group, you know, and I, I just love that. So yeah. the patience of that's the reward sticking around. That yeah. is the reward. Yeah. yeah. And that goes back to that Galatians six passage where it, you know, tells like the farmer who, who sows, you know, yeah. you know, the, the reaping and sowing, you just got to be patient when you're planting all those seeds that, that yeah, God, and just God faithful mm -hmm. to what you know you're supposed to do. Yeah, and that's yeah. about it. You know, yeah. I, have, I have a girl in my youth group that was in my youth group that just I did her wedding last year. Yeah, and expecting their first child. I love and it. Yeah. She doesn't have a dad, so I'm kind of her surrogate dad yeah. in that way. And it's it's great to have grandkids before you have grandkids. <laughs> you know, I love it. <laughs> be patient. Yeah. It's good. Well, some of the kids that were in my youth group are now getting really old. Uh, so let's, I'm not going to go there. Go there. Yeah, I'm not going to go there at all. What's your number five? I have uh, spend time with juniors, fifth and sixth, oh, seventh nice. graders. Yep, yep. You're going to get a good investment from them. You'll create your youth group out of that group. That's the good. kid that's there, the kids that are in your youth group when you came over, if you took over a pre-existing youth group, you'll have some fruit there. But those kids, the fifth, the junior high juniors fifth sixth seventh grade those are the kids that when they're seniors they'll be producing something they'll be your kids that means you're going to have to get into that junior church program however that looks and get involved there and invest and teach and be a part of that that means you're going to have to get involved in your summer kids programs whatever that is if you have a day camp or a vbs or whatever Invest there in those kids because they'll produce the returns that you are looking for more specifically. Don't don't neglect the juniors and seniors, but heavily invest in that that younger group. And and being excited, sometimes those fifth and sixth graders oh. are younger siblings of the kids in your group. Yeah. So, you know, the older siblings are like, no, it's just a little kid. I mean, you know, he's not not that big a deal. But really they are um, you want to show them you know, kind of the respect of an individual uh, mm -hmm. early on. Yeah, mm -hmm. and like capitalize it. on their excitement too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they'll yeah. bring a zeal to you. Yeah, don't yeah. put them you down. Get worn out. Yeah, if you get wore out, hang yeah. out with the fifth graders for a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know how they get all that energy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, number four, uh, number four for me is uh, humor on the foundation of love. Yeah. For a brand new youth leader, he's he needs to recognize that he doesn't yet have this foundation of love. It's not it's not completely known uh, yet, and yeah. so he's got to really work in his first, I think, couple of months, really letting people know um, that he cares about them, that he loves them. After that, that's where you can start. You, you can let that humor uh, go a little bit. Um, but I have, I've made the mistake of a couple times, mm -hmm. kind of a brand new young person. I know what my humor is. I give somebody a hard time, but they don't know yet that I really care about them. You know, right. that I really I love that them. Mistake. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so, um, so we're really working hard at, at, at building relationships and humor is one of the ways we do that. Um, but on the foundation of love. Yeah. Otherwise cutting sarcastic stuff, just, just it only hurts. cuts. Yeah, yeah it, it just hurts. hurts. Yeah. yeah. And they don't really know how to take it. And you're yeah. the leader. I, I think youth leaders don't realize the weight of their words. Yeah. You, you know, they yeah. don't realize you're, you've are you got a position here where they're paying attention. Um, one of my personal rules for me is that if I told a joke about somebody and everybody was like, ooh, you know, you know like that, like that really burned them. Mm -hmm. I was like, mm -hmm. you know what? That was... That mm -hmm. probably wasn't necessary. That goes along with your 10, right? Youth are listening. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And they're paying attention to all your all your words. And humor is great, but those pranks can get out of hand too. Yep. In a hurry. In a hurry. My number four would be be consistent and kind of lining up with the not a novice concept from 1 Timothy 3. Being consistent is not necessarily a factor of your age that you're asking for, Um them to respect you or the things that you're trying to invest in them. Um, but it's, it's pretty simple, basic administration kind of stuff that helps you gain the credibility of, I mean, you want to invest in them spiritually, but you're inconsistent. You can't even get the kids home on time from a youth activity. Like you said, oh, then why should I trust one. you with my spiritual yeah. things, you know, and, and showing up on time or, um, keeping things within the budget and not going over all the little things that add up within a, a family youth ministry, you're going to build a lot by just being 
being consistent with with the simple basic things yeah and the, and the fruit of that consistency is you become predictable so they know what to expect they yeah. know what you're what you're going to do so if you find yourself in kind of in this mode of they can't predict you you know you've got a consistency problem yeah and you don't want to be the stereotype you don't want to be the stereotypical youth pastor goofball <laughs> he mm-hmm. he has a messy activity and he didn't even think to yeah, bring didn't even napkins care. you right, know right. and trash bags and it's like if you can if, if you can just think ahead and be consistent with that it'll go a long way spiritually eventually and when you hand out the oh we'll be back at and everybody laughs so that's not a good you know <laughs> right, oh, we're right. back at 4 no, that's true and yeah like, that's yeah. not where you want to be no, no that's no. not where you want to be good good number four uh invest time I made this mistake, I learned from a mistake. Invest in the steady kid that sometimes gets overlooked and not always the squeaky wheel. I, I made some mistakes early on and even a little bit later where I had a huge heart for um, unchurched kids at all and all and I, our youth group ended up being 90% unchurched kids. And I made the mistake of spending all my time at points with those kids and some good kids that were there and faithful and didn't miss i i i lacked in that area Mm. i should have invested more and i have some that are in college and older now and i look and they're still steady and they're still doing doing good i wish i had invested more into them that were there Mm -hmm. and and Mm -hmm. and i overlooked them excited about reaching new and souls being saved and, and those are good things but be careful to keep that balanced and i i messed up learned from our mistakes there but but uh yeah i guess i saw i um, i talk with our counselors all the time when they have a cabin of nine kids it's easy to identify the one or two that are stars and doing really good and you know they're just they're listening to you really careful and then there's the two or three that are really that their needs are obvious yeah and so those two groups tend to get you know, Attention. all the privilege goes to that group and all the time goes to that group. And there's those three or four in the middle. You just haven't taken the time to figure out where they're at. They're thinking, they're, they're, yeah. they have problems. Um, yeah. You just don't seem to have time for them. And so they... When evangelists say that, well, somebody had told him that their youth ministry was revolutionized when they started preaching to the front three rows instead of the back three <laughs> rows. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. great. So, that's good. Yeah. Building the core there. I learned that a little <laughs> slow, unfortunately. <laughs> but I had a heart for these, you know, unchurched yeah. kids, as it were, and, and that was a good thing, but yeah. in balance. Yeah. yeah. In balance. And, and again, that could be a whole different topic for us, uh, kind of the evangelistic push of a youth group, group. and, yeah. and uh, uh, pitfalls and things that would be mm. good. Our, ours mm-hmm. ended up being very evangelistic, very outreach, mm-hmm. just by the dynamic of our community and our, our school interaction, it just was. Yeah. And so I made a mistake there and learned. Okay, and passing on that to, to other new ones here. So. Okay, I've got a, a, these are my next three for me are kind of a series of communications that need to happen right when you're uh, gonna begin. So my number three is ask your youth about tra- uh, traditions. Find out what has gone before. So, so you know, kind of a youth person's, kind of their whole, their whole kind of career is in youth group is six years, mm-hmm. you know? So, so if you do one thing one year, it's tradition. It's like, oh man, yeah. could, this, this is wonderful. We we always do this, you know, and that's an eighth grader telling yeah. you that. Yeah. Um, and you know, but but to them, they're basically saying, I really liked this. This mm-hmm. was a fun thing uh, to do. So I put here on the bottom, the first thing that you want to do is use a ton of surveys right at the beginning. At, at the very beginning, if you're starting a brand new youth group, I would do a survey every week for I don't know, 10, 12 weeks just to get to know That's the kids. Cool. Everything That's a good from idea. yeah, everything <laughs> from favorites uh, to things, the activities they like to um, just let them pour into you all of the communication so that you can make good decisions uh, in the future. If you're going to be successful uh, in meeting their needs, you're going to have to know them, and uh, that you've got to have a way to input uh, that information. So that's my number three. So great. My number three would be. Be a gardener. So this is from <laughs> Tactics, the book by Greg Kokel. I just finished it, and it's all about 
you don't necessarily have to hit a home run with the gospel message every time. You don't have to lead people to Christ, your first encounter with them. You don't even have to get on base. Um, you pretty much just have to get to the batter's box. So making <laughs> conversations, making gospel conversations can happen through um, a, a mixed analogy here. But being a gardener is planting seeds or watering seeds, not necessarily always harvesting the the fruit of what God has done. God gives the increase. And so being a gardener just means that you are constantly constantly working every conversation around to the gospel in some way. So you might be watering a seed that's there, but every youth activity that somebody brings a guest in, um, you can go through the full gospel with them, but it might just be it might just be a little seed that's planted in their mind. So, but you're constantly looking to be a gardener. And I thought that was a good analogy uh, to not, you know, I don't know. Sometimes the timidity of the task of leading somebody to the Lord the first time you meet him almost makes you not even approach a subject at first. Yeah, this, uh, the, the picture in my mind, I've not read the book, uh, but the picture in my mind has that person who's continually um, discipling help. Like, like it's not, it's not always a massive decision that is no, made. No, but it's everything they yeah, say it's just little is things kind of, that keep yeah. growing them and little things that you do. I believe long haul, the kids that have been with you for six, seven years will look back on the gardening work as the most helpful work mm -hmm. in their mm -hmm. life. You know, And that gardening can happen at the weirdest times. Mm -hmm. Last mm -hmm. kid you're dropping off at the end of the night. That's mm -hmm. a great gardening time. Right. Yeah. 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 It's good. Yeah. I have, uh, remember the parents, spend the time with the parents. Uh, your youth ministry is truly to the parents and helping the parents. And that was our last session. I want to remind you back again that you got to know the parents. What do they want? Where are they going? And get involved in them. They're the, the ones raising the kids. They're the ones that have the biblical responsibility. Yeah, and in our in our last video where we took a little bit of time to share different ideas or 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 thoughts that show you how to spend that time with parents. I think if you start at the very beginning, um, letting parents know part of my time and being here as a youth leader is a parent. In my ministry to parents, and, uh, and, and it just gets you off on the right foot. Mm -hmm. I think you're mm -hmm. the one that taught me that first up, and it helped me <laughs> early on. And then no cell phones. That was a good, good move. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good move. Harder and harder. harder yeah, and those harder. rules change. <laughs> really time. harder. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's been cell phones for like. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> hey, in a bag. <laughs> They're getting back to that size, though. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a cell phone. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we digress. Yes. Sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, my number two. Uh, my number two is ask parents. Now I'm going to be very specific on this one. Mm -hmm. Ask parents about change and improvements. When you Ooh. ask the parent, Ooh. what would you like to have changed or improved in this next year? That's going to open them up to a probably a, maybe a sensitive topic or maybe something that they wish the youth group was a little bit more of or less of. And so, um, yeah. yeah, where you have the opportunity to ask youth surveys and hit them over and over, you don't get to hit parents, you know, a, a yeah, bunch of on. times. But I just want to ask them right up front, anything that you wish was changed or improved a little bit, you're probably the best thing is, that you're going to hear is maybe one or two parents' pet peeves or maybe their... Um, where they thought the it was off balance or, yeah. or venting. So you're, you're getting this so that you kind of just understand where the parents are at um, right now. You know, so. one of those pits that have been dug before. Right, right. Yeah. I've gotten yeah. in the most trouble in my yeah. life for doing the same thing, you know, that the last guy did, <laughs> yeah. you know, and then yeah. they really, they, everybody yeah. does this. And I'm yeah. like, oh, I just did it the first time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's great advice. Great advice. So I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> My number two would be to be organized. This kind of mm. piggybacks with being consistent. And I'm not even a super organized person. Come I on. have a goal. Don't even. No, I'm That's not. That's not true. I'm, I'm end goal oriented. So if there's something that I want to happen, then usually organization is going to get me there. So my pet peeve is not, I, I, I'm not a super neat freak kind of guy, but for the people that live their whole lives off the cuff. <laughs> I just sit back and think, did you not even think to get that one thing? You know, you have this whole activity and you didn't even think about gas in the bus, you know, that we're taking right now. So the incons to me, it 
turns into if there's any area that I'm being inconsiderate in because I'm not organized, then those are the things I want to shore up, not just being organized for the sake of organization, OCD. I'm not OCD. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I, I you know him better than I do. Yeah, I don't he's care not, about the details not, for he's themselves. Close. Yeah, he's close. But I like things in order for the sake of what it can produce in the end. Yeah, you know, and that that's not even a personality thing because I know that grates against some people's personalities. Like mm -hmm. I would never do that. I can never. But I lose respect for people that only speak off the cuff and they only come up with the gift of gab is all they live off of and there's no thought to anything they do, you know? Yeah. And this, this is interesting because a person, uh, sometimes a younger person believes they can remember everything that they yeah. can kind of absorb it all. And you find very quickly that what I need to do to be ready for a youth activity, it's a checklist pretty long. Yeah. Right? Like I, I should work. Through it gets that out of checklist. your control. If it's right. a good you, enough youth, your ministry. mind can't yeah. remember everything. No, you can't. It shouldn't be. And right. if you want to go to the next level. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which I hope you do. You, you're going to have to get better at that. Or find somebody day. on your youth staff that can do that for yeah. you. Yeah. But, but it takes time to be organized and you have to believe that that time spent has a, has a payback. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, that it was worth it. So I find that the time that I spend to be organized is helpful because I'm spending it before I'm in the crunch of the moment. Right. And yeah. in the crunch of the moment, if I'm not organized, it just makes everything well, uh, and worse. Like getting things done is a methodology kind of, but he talks about the freedom you can have in the moment, even yes. though you got thousands of things to do exactly it's so freeing to be able to host a youth rally and you're not freaking out about every last minute yeah. thing that you well, forgot and then you to could be the gardener you know, yeah you, you can, can be the gardener you, you can, can enjoy water the and weed and, yeah. and not worry about uh, are there sandwiches <laughs> right yeah exactly yeah again whole nother topic here yeah. some of yeah. the tools of, yeah. of how to be organized um but at the end of the day it's not a spiritual gift it's not a it's something that a person just chooses uh, to work at. I mm -hmm. do think there's some people that might have a little natural. bit more administration yeah, no, yeah, or yeah, creativity, yeah, yeah. but I believe everybody can be organized yeah. to a degree. Everybody can go to a seminar or watch a video, get around some guys that are and say what works for and, you and, and, just and figure it out. Yeah. Learn to think about what you're going to do in the moment, but think about it. I think there's even some checklists online that I've seen for youth activities. Like how do I have a good activity? Box number one, this, this, this. Yeah, and you're going to create your own from those templates. Yeah. You know, you're yeah. going to start yeah. uh, figuring that out uh, yourself. But boy, it goes into message preparation. Mm -hmm. It goes into curriculum. Uh, it goes into everything you do. This this paints um, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. rest of it. Wow, you've got one on your list. I wish I had yeah. a list. Yeah, right. I know. I was just thinking <laughs> It's not in your writing. I was actually going to ask you even... <laughs> Wow, we could go deep along. <laughs> yeah, we could. This we one, really yeah, we, really we better keep moving. Yeah, uh, number two for you. Uh, preaching calendar. So that mm -hmm. kind of comes with organized. Yeah. I didn't learn this until five or six years in a scope and sequence. What do you want your kids to have? And I'm talking just the preaching and teaching time, really. What do you want them to have in six months, in a year, and in six years? And it took me a number of years to get there. And I have a father-in-law that's a teacher and he does, he's excellent at scope of sequence. I saw, sat with Brian, I think, and you, mm -hmm. and we talked about that and I got an idea. Then I sat with him and it was great because I had 16 years. That first six years was a mess. But after that, the next 10 years, I knew my kids were going to get how to lead to my Lord. And what does it mean to be biblical? And what is, I could set that out and then plan even time in that calendar for, oh, we had an issue, we mm -hmm. had this and that. And it just, it was so freeing and I knew where we were going and I knew what they were getting. I have I have kids now that call me back and they're in this church somewhere else. And they said, we got that. And the kids in this youth group, they didn't get that. And why not? And I says, I'm not that smart. I just laid it out and it was huge. And it was even to some degree, it's been a struggle as the pastor now because how do I do that in a church? Mm -hmm. It's easy because every six years they change and those messages <laughs> just tweak some or you have new inspiration about it now. And as the senior pastor, it's different. But I could count on them. I know this kid knows how to lead somebody to the Lord if I need to help because I, I taught it every year or, or whatever it was. 
So get, get involved in that and, and make sure you know where you're going. That's something that you want to run past your pastor as well. Like how, like, cause it, it complements, it complements from K through six, you know, and then youth and then into adult ministry, but uh, a preaching calendar. If you just step back and say, okay, what is everything that you're hoping uh, to be able to cover? Uh, that also helps a parent know these, here's some areas we won't cover. Like, like it just, there won't be, the time to go over all of those all of those yeah. things but every, six years a lot of time every two years how to use deodorant yeah that's a good <laughs> good spot that's you know? good. my preaching calendar <laughs> is a uh is a three-year rotation uh that each one of those three years it just looks at it from a different angle um the same topic you know what i mean yeah, so, a lot of yeah say i have an apologetic uh series on year one, year four is also going to have another apologetic yeah. series. Yeah, yeah, because your seventh grader and your tenth grader yeah. are just very different people. I remember we were in my preaching calendar. We had all of a sudden this big uprising about uh, creation versus evolution. And some topic had happened at a school, and there was a big kind of flare up in a school. And I, I had changed my calendar. We were able to, and we talked about it before, but okay, we went deeper. And, yeah. it, and those kids. They they loved it and they learned so much and they can they can talk about it. Yep, good stuff. Number one, uh, another communication thing. So these top three are all about uh, communication. <laughs> but know your pastor's philosophy of ministry, not just his philosophy of youth. The philosophy of min of youth is a small part of his overall philosophy of ministry. I believe this is about a two to three year project. Um, I, this I does agree. not happen in your interview. It didn't happen in your orientation. It doesn't even happen in just your first year. It is a long term, um, continually asking questions and, and delving to understand uh, what his philosophy is, of ministry is. You don't want to be confrontational. You don't want to be like, like uh, you, you truly want to be learning what his philosophy of ministry is. And he might not have said it out loud very often. Like, like it might not be something he's got to think through uh, what you're asking, but it is really uh, helpful to understand how he sees all the ministry mm -hmm. and then where my fit is. And then I, I think I'm just so much better a youth leader when I understand how I fit in the whole Yeah, scheme. I'm really comfortable with our youth pastor, partly because he came through our uh, youth ministry, yeah. so he yeah. gets it already. And then partly just he's smart, so he, he gets it too. Yeah, he picks up on it even without a lot of sit down and listen to yeah, my yeah. teaching. He absorbs kind of it, thing. sees it. Yeah, yeah, he gets it. I'm going to yeah. go ahead and jump out of order. Because mine did <laughs> <Oops>. say, <laughs> know your pastor's heart. It's the same thing. Yeah. So I'm going to jump that out there because yeah. you got to know your pastor's heart. Yeah, I'll write it. All right. Because uh, what you just said, you just have to figure out where, and you might have to draw that out of him. Right, yeah. Tactfully. Right, right. Draw that out of me. What do you want? How does that work? What What are you thinking on this? Yeah, can I can I ask you a question every yeah. week? You know, and can yeah. I uh, can I understand what what's what's in your mind when you're yeah. making different choices and, and 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 know how he wants that? Like, does he want an email? Does he want a conversation? And yeah, but you've and that's a two or three year process. What you said yeah, for yeah, sure. I've been graced by knowing my pastor sixteen years, and then now the guys behind me that I've hired, I've known for a long time, and hiring out of my youth group. So that is easier for us yeah. but for the most of you out there it's it's going to be more effort a yeah. lot more effort yeah cuz cuz most people are coming in a little bit new yeah. you know they we're not right. having quite that same uh that same setup uh, where you just kind of it's always been around you but yeah. that's the truth that's why we're hiring those guys because we're <laughs> because speeding they up that know process one. right right yeah <laughs> uh, time. that's all taken care of yeah well, not all can, but yep. a lot they can be really effective almost right away then yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. well mine is not necessarily First in order, just kind of happened to be the last one I landed on. Be a resourcer, which is not a word. Not a word. <laughs> be resourceful. <laughs> one who provides resources. When I was a teen, I was uh, I was playing guitar at an event. Afterwards, there was an older gentleman with a. He was just so kind, and you know, really nice. Handed me a card, and we started talking about Christianity, and I didn't know what he was quite getting at. Turns out he was charismatic, believed in in sign gifts, which our church doesn't. And we had just come through a series in youth ministry that had taught on it. But of course, as a teenager, I'm thinking, oh, whatever. <laughs> but um, 
we were working through a workbook and a spiral bound workbook that had taught all about it on gave all the scripture references. And so at the time of the teaching, it wasn't interesting or it, it wasn't applicable mm -hmm. to me at the time. But when I was finally confronted with um, with somebody who believed it, it was like, OK, it gave me the resources to go home, research it for myself. I poured over all the scriptures for myself, really learned it because I was writing an email back and forth with this guy and we were talking and he was really gracious and I didn't change his mind, but what it did was help me mm -hmm. because of the resources that um, we had been given through our youth ministry. So because of the content production we're constantly doing in youth, in youth ministry, um, you know, we're just machines at producing new fresh content every single week. It shouldn't just be audible. I think it should be put into their hands too. Let them take it home. If they never see it, fine. But if so, I have girls that, you know, we would hand out a sheet every single class. So twice a week, they would get a sheet with a little 300 word note on there. And a couple of girls kept every single one of them over mm -hmm. their mm -hmm. six years in youth ministry. And it was just like teaching about loving God or Bible reading or whatever. And just keeping the resources with them. And then be resourceful is just, you know, be thrifty, do things yourself. I just had yeah, to. That was on my list that then. didn't make it. <laughs> yeah. Be resourceful. It was an Ministry honorable changes. Mention. Sometimes, yeah, it was an honorable, mm -hmm. that's a good honorable mention. Sometimes you have to do with less, sometimes you have to do with more. Yeah. Don't whine and complain about it. Figure it out, make it work. Yeah. yeah. Be resourceful. Won't be that whiny. Oh, we can't do that. This yeah. Good. Boys, this is quite a list. This is 30 items that are, uh, that's that's a lot of th stuff to take in. And honorable mention, I there were several I just couldn't yeah. do. Probably one of the more important ones for me is don't get upset at parents who take their kids out of your youth group in order to get them involved in serving at church. Yeah. <laughs> like it sounds like a, a simple <laughs> right, thing, yeah, but yeah. you're like, no, I want the whole group together. Yeah. But if they are serving in another way at church, that's a that's a good thing. Don't be frustrated. Our youth pastor said calendar management and event planning. If they don't teach that in like a youth ministry course mm -hmm. at college, they're doing it wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's that's you know, planning ahead is what you're doing every day. Yeah. I had on the mention of yeah. finance. Be aware of your finances. Yeah, your the budget. church and your budget, and or if you have no budget or whatever it is, <laughs> that was an honor to mention. Another whole another topic. Yeah, uh, that we could uh, that we could deal with. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know uh, why you're watching this video. At this point, you have uh, endured an hour of us talking about all of these things. Um, and uh, chances are you might be brand new to ministry or maybe you're watching it with uh, with your pastor. But I hope that some of these things are helpful for you. I, I look forward to uh, being in heaven when we are able to see kind of the results of youth ministry done well. I, it's one of those faith things where where you just pour into lives and you see a few of them in the impact, uh, but I don't think we'll know until yeah. we, we get to heaven yeah. Uh, yeah. how that that gardening and that work and that, that planting of the seed, just the little things that had an impact in other people's uh, lives. So thanks for watching. <laughs>